Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, as the partner said, uh, I'm Paul Gansel. I'm a software developer in the New York office in Bloomberg, uh, and I also maintain Python Data Util. Um, so just a warning for this talk. Uh, I am dialectically challenged, and so uh, it's really not going to be possible for me to mentally transform these Zs to Zs, and I'm going to say it a lot. So you should just be prepared. Every time I say Z, just think Z. Okay. So I'm just going to get right into it because, uh, as everyone knows, you know, uh, time zones, when you want to learn about them, they should probably take a half an hour, 40 minutes at most to learn, but I only have 20 minutes, so I'm going to go fast. Uh, so for starters, we have uh, UTC, uh, just to get everyone on the same page. UTC is sort of the reference time zone. No one lives in UTC. No one really does anything in UTC. Uh, but it's supposed to be a really easy way to, uh, the, uh, uh, an easy time zone that you can transform your local times into. Uh, it's supposed to be monotonic, but it's really monotonic-ish because for some ridiculous reason they decided that uh, leap seconds should be part of civil time. Don't ask me why. Um, another concept that you should know about is uh, time zones versus offsets. So right now, the offset from UTC in London is one hour, UTC plus one. That's an offset. Uh, whether that's in London now or in France in six months uh, makes no difference. Uh, that's always, if you see UTC plus one, just subtract, uh, add or subtract, I always forget, uh, one, and that gets you to uh, uh, UTC. Europe slash London is a time zone. It's a set of rules for transforming your local time into UTC. Um, now, what's BST, right? So if you, if you print your current daytime, uh, you get BST. Um, is that a time zone, is it an offset? Well, it, it's kind of an offset in the sense that it only refers to the part of Europe, London time that is one hour ahead of UTC. But uh, it, the problem with these is that these are very highly context dependent. Because if you're here and you say BST, that means British summertime. If you're in Bangladesh, it means UTC plus six. Uh, and if you're in uh, Papua New Guinea, it's Bougainville standard time, which is UTC plus 11. So as a general rule, people will like to see these if you display them, but don't count on them to mean anything and don't try and parse them. Um, so. Now, here's everyone's favorite part, where I go through all the crazy edge cases. And honestly, there's not actually time to go through all the crazy edge cases. So I'm going to start us off easy with uh, Australia. They have, they have a non-integer number of hours offset in certain parts. Like, oh, that's, that's real spooky. But then we, we move on to Nepal. They have not even not an integer number of half hours. They, they're off on a 15 minute. And if you go into history in Liberia before 1979, they don't even have an integer number of minutes. It's off by 30 seconds. So you can say, OK, well, you know, at least we know that daylight saving time, like the only reason you're going to change is daylight saving time, right? Wrong. The base offset can also change. So in Portugal, in 1992, uh, the Portuguese decided instead of being in Western European time, they wanted to be in Central European time. So they wanted to move over by one hour. And sensibly, they did this when um, they were already transitioning from summertime back to standard time. So what they did was they said, OK, in September of 1992, we're going to stop being on Western European summertime, and we're just going to start being on Central time, which means that the UTC offset did not change, but the DST offset did change. So that can happen. Uh, and uh, you can note that this first change didn't go so well. They were having sunsets that were after midnight. Um, so about four years later, they did the same thing in reverse with another offset change, a DST change with no offset change. So OK, maybe you say, all right, well, yeah, there's, there's that like one weird edge case. But maybe is there any, the, at least if you're in, on daylight saving time, you're only going to transition once per year, right? Incorrect. In Morocco, since 2012, um, what happens is they go onto daylight saving time, like uh, many people do, in the spring. So you have uh, uh, your, your standard uh, um, transition there. And then at the end of July, they go back to standard time for about one month. And then they go back on to daylight saving time. So what's going on here? Well, Morocco has a large Muslim population. And Ramadan falls in the middle of summer. And in Ramadan, Muslims aren't allowed to eat you know, until sunset. And so their solution to this is to say, OK, we'll just have sunset an hour earlier during <laughs> Ramadan. So you have to keep that in mind. You can say, OK, well, all right, we have that. But everyone, at least, does daylight saving time at 2 in the morning or 1 in the morning. So I'm never going to see an ambiguous date time that is like 
in the middle of the day, right? Incorrect. In uh, Kiribati, or Christmas Island, uh, in 1994, the Kiribatians, they decided that they preferred uh, one trading partner or the other, Australia or the US, I forget which, I, I'm terrible at details. But essentially what they said was, uh, we're gonna, they, they, li they live right on the international dateline. So they said, all right, we're just gonna switch from being on one side of the dateline to the other. So we're just gonna skip uh, December 31st. It's just like December 30, 30th, 11.59, and then one minute later, Happy New Year. <laughs> so you say, okay, maybe, yeah, that happened. It was the 90s. We were watching a lot of Seinfeld, you know, water cooler talk. Uh, but no, it can happen today. It happened again in Samoa in 2011. And if you go back pretty far in time, you can see in the Kwajalein Atoll, they went the other way. So in 1969, there were two September 30th in the Kwajalein Atoll. So, okay, now you say, all right, fine. Yeah, the offsets are all crazy. The people will do crazy stuff with their offsets. But at least we know that if we're in one place, there will always be one time zone. I can always say what the time is in a certain time. So China, in an effort to sort of rationalize their time zones, said we're gonna have one time zone throughout all of China. It's gonna be UTC plus eight. So over here uh, in like Beijing, that's like pretty good. If you're, if you're over, over here in like Xinjiang, that's not so great because the sun rises at four in the morning. Um, so in Xinjiang, a lot of people start using what's called Xinjiang time which is UTC plus six. But the Chinese government doesn't recognize Xinjiang time and doesn't really care for it. So all the trains still run on UTC plus eight and all the planes do and all the official offices. And if you look on Wikipedia, it seems that the breakdown between whether you use Xinjiang time or Beijing time is your race. If you're part of the uh, Uyghur minority, you use Xinjiang time. So this is a racial time zone. You, you get that through GDPR. So, all right, so now we're, I've, I've, I've thoroughly scared you. Time zones are terrifying, they're crazy. Why should we work with them at all? Why can't we just go UTC for everything? Well, you can imagine that it would be a common occurrence in say Bloomberg to say, uh, I would like to know when trading ended in New York on any given day. So I can write this nice recurrence rule that says Friday, five o'clock, trading ends. I could maybe say Friday, 10 o'clock UTC, but is that really gonna work when I change my UTC offset because of daylight saving time? Uh, it's, it's not, right? So I still have to say, there are still times where there's something important in looking at the civil time. The civil time is five o'clock, that's what people actually use, and when you wanna find out when that time actually is, you need to make the mapping there. Um, so how does Python deal with this? So Python has a very specific time zone model, and the way it works is there's an abstract base class called TZ info. This is one of these Zs. Um, so, and you're supposed to subclass it. And your subclass should implement three functions, TZ name, UTC offset, and DST. Um, and these are functions of the naive date time. So it's supposed to be one uh, sort of singleton object that uh, represents the set of rules, and those rules are implemented as functions. Um, so here's an example. This is Eastern time. Uh, I've implemented it. I have this little is daylight function that uh, uses actual US rules. Um, and if I, if I go on one side of the daylight saving time uh, transition and then on the other, I, I get the appropriate thing, right? Uh, so then if I go through this appropriate rules type situation, I say, all right, um, now I, use, I, I go from UTC, I get the first one, uh, the Eastern Standard Time, and then I go one hour ahead in UTC, and now it shows up, instead of as 1.30 minus five, it shows up as 2.30 minus five. So what's up with that? Um, so to, to explain why that's broken, you have to understand ambiguous times. So ambiguous times are times where the wall time occurs twice, and as you remember, the functions that you're implementing are functions of the wall time. So obviously, if you have two wall times that are differentiated only by their offset, there's no function that you can write that will map wall times to the correct offset. Um, so here's an example, you have two 130s, one on one side and one on the other. So how does this work in Python? Uh, up until maybe a year or two ago, uh, it just didn't. It was like, it was just broken. The, it was like, you just can't do that. Um, so 
but Python 3.6 introduced the fold attribute with pep495. Um, and the fold is a property of the date time that tells you which side of any given fold that you're on. So here, I have this implementation that says um, 130, and then I pass it fold, and uh, if I put fold equals zero, it's on the daylight time because that's the first one that occurred. And if I pass it fold equals one, that's the second time that time occurred. And so I can write a function that takes this fold and turns it into an offset. Um, so um, now I'm gonna take a brief digression into the semantics of comparison. So if you have two daytimes and you wanna know, are they the same daytime? What does that mean? Uh, in Python, what it means is that if they're in the same zone, and this is a bit complicated, but if they're in the same zone, what it does is it imagines that they're not in any zone at all. It just takes the naive portions and compares them, um, and uh, which is a fine rule when you don't have ambiguous date times because that always means the same thing. Uh, when you do have ambiguous date times, you have to decide whether the fold is part of the thing you're comparing or not. And I, I don't know why this decision was made, but uh, it's, it was decided that that is not part of what you're comparing. So if you have two things, uh, you have your 134, four, uh, 130 minus four and 130 minus five, those are considered equal because the naive portion of the daytime is the same. Now, if you have different zones, <clears throat> those are still considered comparable. And what, they're done, what happens is they just uh, convert them both to UTC um, and compare that. So you can, have, you can have a situation like this where it's, it's, you know, it's almost exactly an identical situation where the naive portion is the same and the offset is different, but the difference is that one of them is in New York and the other one is in Chicago. Um, whereas um, in, the other, in, in the previous example, they were both in New York. Um, so in Chicago, because they're in different zones, they get converted with the offset. Um, and then, uh, right, and, but, and then the other problem here is that uh, I guess there's some kind of weird thing with hash invariance. I, I, I really can't explain this. I don't know why I mentioned it in the slides. Uh, but if either date time is ambiguous, Python just throws up its hands. It's like, no, I don't know. It's, they're not the same, whatever. Maybe, who cares? I mean, really, come on. You, you try, you're trying to pull a fast one on me? Give me an ambiguous date time? <laughs> no way, buddy. Uh, all right, so here's a curious case. This came in through the issue tracker. So say so I have this x equals date time. It's March 25th at 1 a.m. in London. I convert it to a, a UTC offset. Or, or I'm not a UTC, uh, an epoch time, right? So I convert it to a, a timestamp. And then I convert it back, and I put it in the same time zone, same exact time zone object, right? Um, and then I create another one where I just get a new instance of the same time zone, still Europe, London, right? So now I'm going to compare these. They should, all be, they should all be true, right? Because they all represent the same time. So x equals y, false. Not off to a great start. Uh, x equals z, true. Okay, I'm maybe a little better, but that's still a little puzzling. But, you know, I guess that means y equals z is false, right? Oh, no, wait, it's, it's true. So what's happening here? Why is there this non-transitive comparison pr property of time zones? So this comes down to what's known as imaginary times. So we already talked about ambiguous times. Now there can be a gap on the other side when you, move, when you go from standard to daylight. And um, so I have an example here of, a, of where you jump from 1 to 3 a.m. Um, so now let's plug our original, let's look at the values from our original example. So we have this 1 a.m. It's 1 a.m. plus 1. If you uh, try and turn that into uh, UTC, if you go to that same time at UTC, it's midnight, and then one second later, or one hour later, it's 2 a.m. So that 1 a.m. didn't actually exist. You can just construct a, a non-existent time. So, but why was it non-transitive? Okay, so I mean, we can assume that it's some sort of undefined behavior or otherwise, but why was it not transitive? So if you look here, you see that when you take the London date, you turn it to UCC, you get this, midnight date, and when you turn it back, you also get midnight at a different offset, but it's in Europe. Now, when you look at Y and Z, Y and Z are both the existing time, they're the, the, the UTC time. So you may know where this is going. If you look at x.tz info and y.tz info, they're the same object. So what's the rule for the same object? It's you compare the naive portion. So the x has 1 a.m., y has 
midnight, and so they're not the same. But when you go x versus z, they're actually different objects, and that's what Python uses to determine whether uh, two daytimes are in the same time zone is the is relationship. And so uh, what you do, what happens there is they go, oh, these are not the same time zone, let's convert them to UTC, and uh, X can go to UTC just fine, it's just UTC that can't go to X. And so they both go to UTC, they get the same daytime, and they're the same. So that's your non-transitive non uh, daytime. So how do you work with actual time zone objects? Uh, I don't think I'm gonna have time to go into the details of how to use date utils, particular time zones, but I'll tell you right now, I recommend that you use date util over PyTZ. Um, PyTZ was doing the right thing for like 14 years before date util was even able to do the right thing. But now date util is able to do the right thing and it's a little more Pythonic. So if you take, uh, date util provides a number of uh, time zone objects. I'm gonna take this one that represents Pacific time. I can just pass it to the constructor as you would expect from the documentation. So you set TZ info equals this thing and it works just fine. Um, now if I wanna take that and just keep the wall time, but say this is actually a wall time that's not in Pacific time, it's in Eastern time, I can use the dot replace and that just sort of drops off the TZ info and gives me a new date time with uh, uh, Eastern time in it. Um, but if you wanna know the same moment in time represented in Eastern time, right? So I wanna say you're scheduling a call and it's represented in Pacific time, you use as time zone. And what as time zone does is it goes to UTC and then it goes uh, to whatever other time zone you told it to go to. So that's how it works with date util zones. Now with PyTZ, if you attach a PyTZ zone, uh, if, you, if you take a date time and you uh, do as time zone for a PyTZ zone, it'll work just fine. It's exactly what you expect. Um, but if you construct a date time directly that way or use replace, as I mentioned, it fails in this horrible way, right? You see, like this should say Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time or something, right? Uh, but it says LMT. The offset is minus 4.93 hours. Okay, like what is that? Well, that's local mean time. That's what it was before time zones were standardized. And that's what it was like in New York. Um, and PyTZ uh, has a strange time zone model. All of PyTZ's TZ infos that get attached to date times are static offsets. So what happens is PyTZ will just uh, take the date time, figure out what offset to attach, and then attach it directly uh, to the date time. This has some advantages such as being able to disambiguate between ambiguous times and imaginary times as you're attaching the date time. Um, so when you use this, so what they do is they, you, they take the time zone object and they localize to the date time and that attaches the right one. But if you do some arithmetic on it, like you add six months, uh, it doesn't, there's no hooks for it to update that information. And so what happens is it just still keeps returning the daylight time. Uh, so you have to use the time zone object again and you do normalize, which is essentially saying, uh, figure out why, why this is wrong and do the right thing. I have way more detail on this in my uh, blog posts on blog.gansel.io. It's called PyTZ, the fastest foot gun in the West. Um, so, um, so how do you handle ambiguous times? So um, if you're using the as, as, t as time zone, um, where you, you sort of are, have something that's already UTC and you want it as a, an aware date time, uh, that'll just work with both date util and PyTZ. Uh, PyTZ will not, date util will set the fold attribute, uh, PyTZ will not because PyTZ doesn't need the fold attribute and doesn't do anything with it. Um, if you're working in something before 3.6, and I mean, who really is doing that these days? Um, then you can, Day Util provides a backwards compatibility uh, mode that you can use the tz.enfold method. You pass it a date time, and then you pass it what value fold is gonna be. The default is just setting it to one. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll set the fold method if you're in 3.6 plus, or if it's not, uh, if you're in 2.7, it'll create this sort of daytime subclass that has the full attribute backported. So this has most of the same semantics and you can use it as appropriate. And also uh, as time zone will still work that way. If you wanna detect ambiguous times, uh, uh, date util has a detect ambiguous, and so, or, or it's just called daytime ambiguous. So you pass it a daytime, it tells you whether or not it's ambiguous. Um, if you want, so if you want to say something, you have it coming in, say you're adding an hour each time, and if it's an ambiguous date time, you want to be on one side or the other, you want to be on the standard side, uh, you can sort of say, if it's ambiguous, set fold to one. 
But you actually don't have to do this because the spec says that if fold is one on a non-ambiguous time or a non-gap time, then what you get is um, just whatever the value is. It, it has no effect. So you can just set fold equals one all the time and it'll get you standard. But you know, if you want it to be neat and not see folds, then don't set fold equals one. Um, so uh, handling imaginary times, uh, dateutil provides a daytime exists. It's the same as a daytime ambiguous. You, you ask if a daytime exists. If it exists, uh, it'll say true. If not, um, false. Uh, generally, the kind of hard thing to do is if you're sort of adding one hour at a time to an aware daytime, and you know you're at 1:30, you go one hour ahead. It should be 3:30 instead of 2:30. Um, then. Uh, you, you, you're, the, the thing that you usually want to do is not skip back. You want to skip forward by an hour. Uh, so uh, uh, date util added during one of the sprints by this young lady right here in the, in the second row um, has this resolve imaginary function. You pass it something, and if it's not imaginary, it just gives you the same thing back. If it is imaginary, it skips forward by whatever the gap was. So if that gap is one hour, it skips forward one hour. And in the case of Christmas Island, if it's one day, you skip forward one day. Um, and both these functions will actually work just fine with PyTZ time zones. Um, all right, so I'm gonna skip over this part because I wanna be able to take questions. Uh, just a parting response. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, things about like, what should I do with time zones and, and things like that. And I'm happy afterwards to take all kinds of questions. Uh, you know, I, I could talk about this stuff for hours. Um, the things to keep, that I would keep in mind are uh, civil times versus timestamps. Uh, so a civil time, is the time on the wall. If you have something where it matters what the time on the wall is, such as a meeting, almost every date that you care about in the future, uh, other than, you know, like the asteroid will hit on Monday at 2 a.m. Uh, UTC, right? If it's human related, store it as actually a local time with the time zone. Don't convert it to UTC because that mapping is not stable. You could, as is, was in the case of Egypt, all the time when they decide whether or not to have daylight saving time or whether to have daylight saving time during Ramadan or not. Um, they will give you three days notice, right? Your phone is not necessarily gonna be updated there. You could have scheduled a meeting three days ahead of time. Even if you managed to update your phone correctly, if you stored it in UTC, it's now off by an hour. Um, so for things in the past, you can store them as UTC just fine. As long as you care about the time between two events or how long ago it happened, like the exact time that it happened. Uh, you can store it in UTC or UTC with, a, with an offset. Um, and with uh, INA, um, never rely on these three letter abbreviations. Uh, you can use the INA keys, but if you're localizing, like if you wanna show someone like, you know, uh, something that's some time in Ukraine, uh, you probably wanna use CLDR because uh, like those keys are not intended to really be human readable. All right, uh, so that's it. You can uh, try and help with the util. I'm open for a lot of uh, pull requests. We've, we've been running sprints here and they've been going fantastically well. Check out my website or my blog. Um, and you know, thanks to Bloomberg for flying me out here and hosting this conference and everything. All right. So I think we have two minutes for questions. Um, I just want to thank you, Paul. Um, that was quite interesting, especially because I'm sure we all have one or two nightmare stories about working with time zones. Um, anyone? Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Um, what have been some of the practical ways you've um, uh, faced or overcome some of these challenges in your work here? Um, well, so to be honest, I hit most of these problems when people uh, come to the issue tracker of date util, which is why like, I'm, I'm, I'm always old hat by the time I have to do something. Um, if I ever have to use this stuff myself, it's like I know where the pitfalls are because I had to fix 10 other people's bugs. Um, you know, a lot of times it comes down to just making assumptions uh, about, it, it comes down to making assumptions about what the time zones are doing, not really understanding <laughs> the model. And uh, after every time I give this talk or any related talk, a lightning talk or anything, uh, what happens is someone comes after me afterwards and says, oh, I, I have some bugs in prod because I've been using PyTZ by just attaching it to the TZ info. So watch out for that. Like do a search, a control F over your whole code base for PyTZ, dot, uh, PyTZ time zones and check to see that they're not being used that way. 
Okay, I think that's all we have for time. I, you can just find Paul afterwards if you have any more questions. Um, we have a five-minute break, and then we'll start the next session.